Hey, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel, Just Reflex Image. If this is the first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon. If you're already a subscriber, welcome guys. A uh, quick one guys, please do follow my new account of Instagram. My account was banned a few days ago. Please follow my new account. The link is down in the video description. Because I'll be dropping a few tips and short short videos, short short tutorials that you can learn one or two from. So with no further ado, let's jump into action. So the, as you can notice, this outfit is already a white outfit and we want to use it for a Christmas manipulation. So you might have been thinking, how was I able to turn this white outfit to red outfit? So I'll just give you the simple trick. I actually did not use your photo, make it your Photoshop alone, but if you have Photoshop and you have nano banana inside your Photoshop, you should be able to do all this inside of Photoshop. So what I did is that I went straight to Gemini. So I did what? I input this particular pawn display on your screen right now. So I was able to turn turn the red a white outfit into a red outfit with no further ado. All I just need to tell is to do is to do what? Turn this white outfit into red outfit and do not alter any facial expression or anything else in the picture. So that's all I did. And it was able to give me what? This particular red outfit, which I have over here. This is it over here. So, but the resolution it brought for me is very, 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 very low. It's not something I can do, I can make use of. But as me, I'm using the premium version, like the pro version, I should be able to get do what? Get it at a higher resolution. So, all I just did is what? I closed this up right now. So, I open my main document right now. Then I go to my file manager. Then I drag the picture over my existing picture, right? So I just have to expand it until it fills the exact size of the picture, as you can see right now. But you won't see if it's actually fitting perfectly until you do what, come to the opacity, you bring it down. So you can see it's not placing it perfectly yet. So you drag it until you place it perfectly. This is going to take a little bit of time for it to achieve. So that's how I was able to do what I just can see. I'm actually getting it very, very right. So once I do that, all I just need to do is to do what, I'll create a max on it. I'll pick my brush, I'll do what? I'll clean off the other part of it. Then I'll make sure it's only the outfit that is paved. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about right now. So, so this is the document we'll be using right now, as you can see right now. So we only need just, just the outfit there. So what I just need to do right now is to max it by clicking on Ctrl I. Yeah, let's Ctrl I on it to invite our selection. So I pick my brush color, I'll make sure the color is on black, is on white, sorry. Then I'm going to do what? Scroll over the area which I need. As you can see, so you need to do what? I'll make sure I'm not selecting scrolling part of the outfit with it. As you can see right now, can you see what I'm just doing right now? And it's fitting in very, very perfect. So that's how what I did to be able to get what I got. Very, very simple and straightforward. So my skin details will still be there because I'm not, I'm not touching my skin details. All I'm just touching is all everything related to red in the picture. As you can see right now, can you see what we are just doing right now? So we're only altering just the outfit alone. I don't want to alter the skin texture because I don't want my picture to look pixelated just like the initial picture did. So if I'm to alter the face right now, can you see what it did? It even changed the facial structure for us and that's what the AI does. And without the facial expression, we are not going to get what we need. Very, very perfect. So that we see right now. So let's turn this off and let's go to our main document, which we'll be using. So now here's what our picture looks like right now. As you can see, our skin texture is today, my facial skin texture. And I'm even yet to retouch this picture, which we'll be getting back to later on in this manipulation. So the next thing I need to do right now is to make sure I rasterize all the layer I'll be working on. To do that, press on Ctrl, Shift, and E. If you're using the MacBook, Command, Shift, and E, you should be able to do what? Rasterize every layer you want, you'll be working on so far. So now let's jump into manipulation with no further ado. So now Ctrl J on your background layer. So let's name this our layer now, our subject layer, S B J E C T. Subject layer right now, right? Next thing you need to do right now is to do what? Click on your quick selection tool and click on select subject or whatever selection tool you know how to make use of to make sure you select your subject right. And boom, I have my picture selected perfectly. As you can see right now. Next thing I just need to do right now is to right click on it. I'll go to feather, under feather, I'll be using 2.0 as my radius, then I'll click on OK. What I just need to do right now is just to click on my max icon, right? So if I'm to turn off my background layer, as you can see, I have my subject on the entire new layer, name the subject layer. So right now, I'll just click on my background layer again. So we are not doing much thing here. What I just need to do right now is to go to my file manager and bring in the background which I'm making use of. So I have the background straight in my download. What I just need to do is to open it up and drag it straight into my Photoshop. 
So here's the background I'll be making use of right now. What I just need to do right now is to drag it straight to my Photoshop, wait for it to load up, and I just have to expand it till I see it, still giving me what I want. So I'll just drag it, I'll drag it, I'll drag it till I see where I'm going to place it in. Take, I like it around this way. I'll click on my OK. But the issue I'm facing right, right now is the moment I drag it the way I want it to be, it's not getting to the footer area where it's supposed to be. So to so amend that, just click on rectangle marker tool, which is right over here. Just circle around a particular area, which is also the floor area. Think around this way. Let me add to the selection, as you can see right now. I've selected this area right now. I'll right click on it. I'll go to Feather. On that Feather, I'll be using 10.0 at my pixel, and I'll click on OK. Then I'll Ctrl G on it. Right? So I'll Ctrl T on it. All we just did right now. OK, let me go back. So if I'm to turn off my background layer and this, as you can see, what we just created is it. I created parts of that particular layer this background will be working on, right? So I'll just Ctrl T on it and I'll drag it down to fill that other areas for me. I'll click on my OK. Uh, my picture is already looking nice, but our picture is not having a nice with a shadow. And before that, we have the remnant of the previous white background in our picture. So to clean that off right now, click on your subject layer, not the max, the subject layer itself. Then do what? Go to layer, under layer, come down to meeting, under meeting, come down to color the content meet. Click on it. Wait for it to load up and I'll be using about 90 or so for my radius. As you can see, it's no longer there again. Then I'll click on my OK. Right? My version is looking nice, but the footer shadow is not showing very, very well. And you know, with that footer shadow, there's no nice manipulation. So what I just need to do right now is to come back to the background layer again. Ctrl G on it, right? Then drag it straight on top of the background layer you just brought in. Here's our two background layer we brought in right now. So change the blend mode from normal. Bring it down to multiply, right? Ctrl L on it right now. So from this dark hand, from this left hand side, drag it up, drag it up. As you can see, if you have to pay attention, can you see the footer shadow is now there? So I'm going to reduce, bring this one down so that it's not going to darken the entire document, just some particular area. And I'm going to darken this area a little bit more. And boom. Here's the before of our footer shadow, and here's the after of our footer shadow. Do you see it's actually looking very, very nice? So to make our manipulation still look nice, let's add a little bit of depth of fit to our picture right now. Let's add a little bit of depth of fit to this area. So I'll just go straight to this, my background layer. I'll control G on it, right? I'll go to filter, under filter, I'll go to blur, then I'll click on Gaussian blur. I'll wait for it to load up, as you can see. It actually blurred everything out for us. I'll click on my OK. I'll zoom in very well. But if you have to notice, it's actually affecting these other areas here. It's affecting this footer area over here. So I'll just create a max on it. I'll do what? I'll pick my brush, I'll make sure the color is on black. And I'll do what? I'll increase my brush size. So I'll clean off just the footer area alone. So that it's not going to blow that area for me. The next thing I just need to do right now is to color grade my picture. Then I'm good to go. Click on my uppermost layer. Go to adjustment layer. Go to color lookup. Then I'll click on my low 3D lots. Then I'll pick the one which I love using the most, which is my Mela chocolate. So I'm going to do what, search for where it's located and I'm going to do what, click on it. So I have all this lot available for sale on my store, I'm not visiting my store today and make purchase today. So I'll click on my Miller Chocolate, I'll click on open, wait for it to load up, but it's a little bit too dark for my liking. What I just do right now is to bring the opacity down a little bit. Bring it down a little bit and boom, my picture is looking very very nice and pink and I was able to retain the melanin skin tone which my subject as very very simple and straightforward so now we're done with our picture manipulation why not jump straight towards our photo retouching in less than a single minute so see you guys in next one minute reflex out so in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file from my overlays down to my color lookup which is my lot file so you just have to scroll down to your video so under the comment this is my description so it's not going to load the description for you. You just have to click on show more, click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want. From the color lookup, this is a light skin lot. This is a feather, which I used in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my 
Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files, this includes all my packs, all my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabric, my color lookup, my preset. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one. So here is my flying fabrics. Here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on. Here is my color lookup, here is my background overlay, and here is my preset file. So in case you're interested in buying anyone, you can actually go for them. The good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency, any currency of your choice. You can buy with any currency of your choice. So welcome to Evo2. So here's the AI photo editing software I use in retouching 90% of my picture. So as you can see right now, here's the before panel and here's the after panel right now. But we, we're used to do anything except I actually added a content link. So let's do it. Let's retouch this picture in less than two minutes. So for you to get discounts on whatever package you buy for them, use the link down in my video description. Trust me, this app is going to help you, especially if you're a photographer in 2026. You're going to smoothen your picture editing process. It's called Evo2 AI. So you don't want to miss out on this offer. So watch me retouch this picture in less than a single minute. The first thing I just need to do is to remove the blemishes. I'll open the blemishes remover, turn on the frequent and angst. I'll go down, I'll turn on the dark circle, eye bag. If there's any, I'll do what? Scroll down to body blemishes. If there's any also, I'm going to do what? Turn it to 100%. So I'm going to close this up right now. If you can notice, there's a little bit of difference in the picture. The blemishes are no longer there. So I'll go to skin retouching. I'll scroll down to frequency separation for the facial skin. Turn it to 100%. Boom. My picture is already retouched. Sculpt dodge and burn. We're going to add dodge and burn to my picture. Even dodge and burn. Wait for it to load up. Scroll down towards where the body is. Same thing for the body frequency separation. And I'm going to do what? Change my skin texture to satin. So that it's going to pop my dodge and burn for me. Next thing I'll do is to do what? Pick a perfect skin tone for my subject, which is very, very nice. And I was able to retort this in less than a single minute before and after, before and after. Boom. We have our manipulation sweet and ready to go. So if this video helped, don't forget to drop a like. And please do follow my new IG accounts to stay updated on some of my latest videos. And don't forget to subscribe also if you find this video interesting. The background will be given to you guys. Just go straight to my Telegram and download there whatever you want. See you guys in my next video tutorial. Reflex out.